Welcome to ADHD Power Tools, where we give you the tools to unlock the power within. Hello, Brooke. Today, I want to ask you, how can you explain inattentive type ADHD and what are some tools you can give us to manage the symptoms? Sure. So when people think of the word ADHD, um, many people are still wondering if they have an attention, why is it ADHD? Because H stands for hyperactivity in attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. But the formally known inattentive type of ADHD used to be called ADD, but then it was changed in the DSM-5 and we refer to it as ADHD inattentive type. So it's a subdomain uh, and there's three types of ADHD. So there's the inattentive, we spoke about the hyperactive impulsive, and then there's combined, which is a mix of the inattentive and the hyperactive impulsive. So if you have inattentive ADHD, as they call it now, very often you can seem forgetful, unfocused, lazy, um, showing up late to appointments. For I think I said forgetful already, distracted. Mm -hmm. So some tools to manage that would be in, and it could be similar with children and adults, but reminders. So if you are a student in a school, who has accommodations for ADHD, very often the inattentive type, you will need redirection and refocusing and maybe some taps on the desk or a visual cue. So for an adult with ADHD who isn't a student, you might need some sort of reminder, whether it be an alarm or a vibration or um, you know a friend who checks in on you or a coach who connects with you. So that's just one thing. Uh, with an intensive, ADHD, very often you can be late. So you might need to pad in some time before appointments and actually attempt to get there early. So this way you have that time padded in. Now, the stress of being somewhere early can sometimes stop an ADHD or from doing that. So I've recommended to some of my clients in the past that if you do get somewhere early, have something that you can do like meditate in the car, call a friend, listen to a podcast or an audio book in the car, um, do something that you might feel to be productive. So this way you're not resentful for being somewhere early. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just a couple of things that you could do with inattentive ADHD. Sleep is super important to help you stay focused. Medication can help, coaching can help, an accountability partner can help. Um, to help you just stay focused. If you're doing a boring task, sometimes music or exercise beforehand can help you get inspired to do it. Mm -hmm. So those are some of my hacks. 100%. Um, the punctuality thing you bring up, um, getting somewhere um, earlier and feeling resentful for getting there early, not doing anything. I do feel that a lot sometimes. And that's why um, sometimes I, I, like you said, I try to think of ways um, to be productive when uh, I do get there early. Um, our, our phones are basically like, you know, little mini computers in our hands. So I try to think of something that we can, I can do productive on my phone as you know, the mini computer it is. We can do a lot on our phones these days involving work and school and everything, uh, what, whatever it is. So I like that a lot. Music, sleep, exercise, super important. I listen to music all the time when I try to stay um, focus during uh, my school work. Um, like I've said before, I was diagnosed at age seven with an attentive type ADHD. So mm -hmm. um, I do have um, trouble focusing and these tools, you know, music helps out a lot. I listen to lo-fi um, beats on Apple Music. There's a mm -hmm. playlist, look up lo-fi study beats and it's yeah. just music and it's really cool, soothing, no lyrics involved because that can be a little distracting whether it's uh, classical orchestral, just something that's very, um, very flowing and uh, keeps you focused. Exercise, super important. Sometimes you're a little um, jittery and you can't sit still and you, you, you need to get, do that exercise. Like I've said multiple times, you feel that weight on your shoulders, it goes down in front of you. And after you exercise and you can sit down and focus um, um, free and freely think 
um, yeah. no distractions. Now for the inattentive type, I, th I think the benefit of exercise more so than the hyperactive or combined with the jittery is the fact that it brings the oxygen to your brain and it helps you actually produce brain cells. So it gives you extra focus because you have the oxygen, you have the blood flow, it's increasing and stabilizing your dopamine and serotonin levels. So it's getting you in the mood. It's giving you more energy to focus. So, which is super helpful for the inattentive type because, hey, I'm combined. There are some days where I don't feel like doing anything. And that's like my inattentive type coming in. And yeah. then there's days where I'm ready to conquer the world, but that's my hyperactive type. So. Yeah, hundred percent. It wakes you up. It's not only uh, physically um, healthy for you, but mentally healthy as well. You make a very good point. It wakes you up. It gets your brain work and the blood flowing and exercise yeah. is so important. Sleep as well. Make sure you get enough sleep so you can stay focused, no distractions. Um, a really cool thing I was I, I looked into the other day, it's called the Zagornik effect. And what the Zagornik mm -hmm. effect is, is unfinished tasks versus tasks you haven't started. Unfinished tasks tend to linger in the back of your head um, versus finished tasks. And I've noticed that with myself. Um, if there's something that I haven't finished, it's going to distract me before I start something new. So it's good to um, it's good to get that out the way. Whether it's ten minutes of um, finishing it up, do what you have to do, or have the humility to set the bar low no, low enough for yourself. You know, understand that you know this task is the main priority. It doesn't have to linger. It doesn't have to distract me right now. I can move on to the next thing. So understand those two sides of the story and uh, continue focusing on your tasks. Hundred percent. Yeah. One of my clients today actually um, said something really interesting. She has a distraction uh, basket. She draws it. So uh, she's inattentive ADHD. And when she wants to go for that run, because she knows it's so good for her. And there's a million things going on in her mind about all of the tasks that she needs to do or wants to do. Instead of taking the time away from what she really wants to do, which is the running, She'll write it down in a picture that looks like a basket, or you could even make a web for yourself, however you want to do it. Yeah. And she writes those things down. And when she's done with the run, then she comes back to it and says, none of these things that I really want to do. And if so, all right, let's prioritize it right now. So I think that's really cool because we sometimes are a little scattered, have a million ideas, and it takes us away from what it is that we really want to do. Another thing that I noticed with um, ADHD ears, but specifically inattentive is the self doubt very often that we're not good enough. We can't, so we have that negative self talk very often because maybe you weren't diagnosed, um, soon enough because it, you looked like you were paying attention, but there was no focusing going on because you were inattentive. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, people might've called you, uh, lazy, not trying hard enough, not reaching your potential, all those things. So you might be telling yourself those stories. So consider like cognitive behavioral therapy, um, or negative self-talk reframing. Daniel Amen has an amazing book called healing ADD. Also Brooke Castillo has a book on, um, coaching yourself. So you can go through all of the reframing your thoughts to create different actions and feelings. So there's lots of work out there that uh, can help you with that, which then will increase your focus because you're not thinking yes. about those negative thoughts as frequently. Yeah. It's like the analysis paralysis right there. You know, you, um, you, uh, that you want to kind of prevent that by surrounding yourself by people who understand what you're going to understand. Um, your strengths, your weaknesses. Like for example, when I'm, I'm driving, uh, say I'm doing a road trip and I have my friends in the car with me. Um, it, when I'm having a conversation with my friends, I tend to miss exits sometimes, especially when I'm going somewhere. Oh, yeah. When it's not in the muscle memory, when it's not a, a place, a route of habit. Yeah. I, I miss the exit. I'm not looking at my GPS. I'm so- Or even if it is in muscle memory, you're like, Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yes. you're just on autopilot and all of a sudden- Boop, totally missed like five exits. That happens exactly. And so um, I let them know, hey, guys, I can't really get into it right now. I'm going to miss an exit if we're in a rush. If you guys want to continue talking, I can miss exits all day long, but we're in a rush. Right now. <laughs> understand that I need to, I need to, you know, stay in the zone. 
And um, it's good to be surrounded by people that understand what you're going through. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. And you, I also want to bring one more thing up. You brought up before apps like Forest. Um, Forest you introduced me to is a really cool app where you um, get to sit down for a good amount of time and focus on something, whatever task it is, and say it's an hour long. If you actually sit down and focus for the hour long and don't touch your phone or something, uh, you know, and then take the break, a little plant grows and you kind of, with time, finish so many tasks and build a forest. So that's been really helpful. I've introduced that to my friends and they love it too. Awesome. Really cool. Really cool. Thank you. And something like that, I know we've spoken about it before, but um, the Pomodoro methods, like um, focus booster, focus keeper, uh, those are all introducing the Pomodoro methods of the 25 minute focus time. Um, not, tw not everyone is a 25 minute focuser. We talk about the average focusing time being anywhere from 10 to 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. So know yourself and your focus time and when you're getting off focus and set an alarm for that using focus booster focus keeper or just a kitchen timer or even time timer which is a visual timer that goes around 100 100 